This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. Recently, OC Weekly did a cover story celebrating the 20 year anniversary of the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show on cable television. I want to personally thank all of the dedicated viewers for the last 20 years. Please continue to spread the word and subscribe to the show on YouTube. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show and tonight we're here at the premiere for What We Do is Secret with one of the people who made it possible and who knew Darby, Michelle Bear Grafari. Tell me about the long road to making What We Do is Secret and how you encourage the makers to keep going. Well, uh, Roger came to me to interview me in 1994. And one day interview turned into eight hours, turned into 16 hours, turned into God knows how many hours. And um, pretty soon we just, you know, it was clear that we were gonna work together and he had a falling out with the person he was working with before. And um, so I kind of just hung in there with him the whole way. You know, I knew that, that Roger wanted to make the best movie he possibly could and that he loved Darby and loved the germs and he, you know, he was the one person that I really felt wanted to make the movie the right way. From what I understand, the movie had funding, then it lost funding, or it would... Tell me about that story. Well, it was pretty heartbreaking because we were about to go into production. We were days away from shooting, and our um, the woman who was going to fund it pulled out. Mm. So we were all set to go, and then nothing. But what we had done is lots of the prep work, um, we had worked out a lot of the costuming and the, um, the band had practiced and the baby germs got together and, and so it ended up in the um, Dragonfly show which was a party celebrating a non-shoot and that's what basically got the old germs out of the woodwork <laughs> and up on stage and I, you know, it's, it, I think it started really to take on a life of its own then and we kind of knew at that point there was the right interest. The people that we wanted to be interested in making the movie were interested, namely the germs. And um, it, we ended up just being, Roger is so persistent. And, you know, I was just there with him the whole time. So we just um, kept going until we finished it. Yeah. Why do you think Darby Crash has become such an iconic figure in the history of punk rock? Well, I think because that's what he wanted. <laughs> he, um, he was a really amazing guy. He was really, really smart. He um, understood philosophy and sociology and decided that he wanted to do something and, you know, saw it through and for some of us we really saw the human side of him as well and um, I don't know <laughs> just kind of you know everything happens for a reason and it just kind of rolled along his short books about Darby it says that he had this charisma to create a following to have people follow him and give me a beer yeah. You know, and like he could just snap his yeah. fingers and people yeah. would do, he didn't have to say, give me a beer because it was just yeah. give me a beer and people would do it. to work at it sometime though. I mean, not everybody would just, you know, roll over and give Darby what he wanted, you know. And, but he was, he was very funny. He was, I mean, he was the funniest person on earth and he would, you know, make everybody laugh around him and, and you just kind of wanted to do stuff. You know, I, I felt like it was a family. Like, you know, he was part of my family and I felt um, comfortable with him because he taught me to be myself no matter what other people said or thought, you know? I mean, we were the first people at uni with blue hair and, you know, got a lot of shit for that. You know, but we took it because we were doing something that we knew um, was different and we, you know, gave us something to kind of live for, but unfortunately it didn't end up that way for everybody. Tell me about the first time you met Darby. Well, I had seen him many times in Westwood and I went to uni high as 
did he? And um, he had been kicked out of school. I spent a lot of time watching him and Pat wandering around school with my friend Bambi, who will be here tonight. And she was a very good friend of Darby's too. And we called him the snake guy because he was just intriguing to us. And sometimes he had green hair and, you know, he had his chipped tooth and he just, you know, we just found him incredibly charismatic, you know, when I was in 10th grade, you know, it just amazing. That aside, uh, my dear friend Dinky Bonebreak, who was Dinky Grant at the time, I also went, she went to uni as well, and we were in journalism together, and um, she just said to me one day, you know, you have got to meet Paul, you guys will love each other. And, you know, the minute I walked into his room, filled with David Bowie and everything, I mean, I just felt so at home, you know? And I, and I, I really feel like he, um, he was kind of a big brother to me. And considering all of the um, stuff that he kind of took, the journey that we went on, um, I still felt like he protected me and he gave me a home and he, um, he taught me a lot in the few years that, you know, that we got to, I got to know him. Tell me some highlights, some light, life-changing highlights of your time with Darby. Well, I mean, there's the infamous decline story where we were partying at my house one night and we discovered a dead body and then that kind of, you know, became infamous, I guess, on decline. It's a little bit embarrassing because, you know, I was a pretty brash 17-year-old or whatever, but... That was, that was a big night because somebody died in my backyard and there he was, there was Darby to um, joke around about it and like get through, and we did not have anything to do with the death, by the way. No, I know. He had a heart attack and <laughs> fell off the ladder, right? Something. I yeah. had been drinking for sure. There was, a, there was a bottle on the ground. Chris Ashford was the germ's first um, do whatever he could possibly do, and he put out their first single, Forming, which was LA's first punk rock single. And he worked at Lipkish Pizza, and he used to let us like go in there and just hang out all the time and be the obnoxious kids that we were. And we lived together for a short amount of time in Hollywood, and I remember at the apartment that we lived together, um, Bambi came over <laughs> and hung out one night, and he, Darby was so funny. I mean, this is, this will probably sound lame in an interview, but we were, you know, trying to go to sleep or whatever, and he came in the house, and he just started jumping on the bed. He just wanted to, us to get up and play with him, you know, and just, that's who he was. He was really playful and, and wonderful and smart, and, and, you know, he was an asshole too, but he was never an asshole to me. You know, really? Never. You know, I mean, I'm sure he said things to make me wake up, you know. I thought his story is really important to tell. I also would love to say, because I don't know if I'll ever have another chance to say this, but I'm so grateful to Darby for giving the scene a home, really, and a name and a face. And, um... I'm just grateful to him for having existed, and I wish that he hadn't thrown in the towel. I think he had his reasons for doing it. And, and, and you don't know why? Well, I don't think anybody knows for sure. Really? But I think that, um, I don't think that he saw himself as a grown-up. I don't think he could picture himself past 22 years old. You know, I thought that, that I think that he made a plan he wanted to become a rock star, and by the time he um, he had gotten notoriety, he um, did what he wanted to do, and maybe had his life been a really happy life, he wouldn't have killed himself, but I think he wanted to create a legacy, which he obviously did, and I think that he just kind of wanted to see Phoenix rising out of the ashes, you know, and I think that he wanted to be he wanted everybody in the world to know him, you know, and I don't know if everybody in the world will get to know him, but at least some people will get to know him now through this movie, you know, and um, it is a movie and it's not all parts of it are, you know, stray a little bit from the truth, but it's, I think it's just about as honest as 
we could get it. But Michelle, it's been great talking Thank to you. Thank you, Eric. Thank a you pleasure. so much. A yes, pleasure. and I'm so Thank glad you for that being here. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. No problem. Thank you for doing this. Blaring out with Eric Blair show with Michelle Bear. Gafari. <laughs> <laughs> Signing off. Blaring out show.